So how does learner-centered fit into the work of the Parthenon group? Well, I think, uh, you know, learner-centered is a bit of a euphemism for a whole bunch of things. I think, you know, what we're seeing is a combination of things that have happened over the last 15 years. We've been extraordinarily successful in expanding access to population groups that didn't historically go to school. And that's put strains on universities' ability to service their needs as the world has evolved. Um, we have launched a whole bunch of new modalities and recently with the Department of Education, different experimental sites with competency-based learning for boot camps and things like that um, that are, again, putting strains on how do institutions deliver to students who are seeking that type of education and differences. We've had a huge change in kind of the demands in the workforce in the last 15 years. So if you look at, you know, what's happened in this you know, in the education world from 2000 till about right now, you've got changes in delivery modalities, changes in the types of students who are in school, and changes in workforce demands. And I think what we're seeing right now is, you know, higher education institutions, I wouldn't say struggling, but, you know, kind of figuring out how to navigate that changing landscape and deliver quality education to folks. What, is, what are the financial implications of learner-centered versus whatever it's replacing? Um, I think done correctly, there's not too many financial implications, actually. Um, yeah. Most of these different modalities of delivery of education do not necessarily put constraints on the cost structure per se. In fact, some of them release you a good bit from the cost structure, either by going to a more competency-based or credit by assessment type of methodology, moving into online modalities, which by and large free you from capital expenditures. So I think done properly, they, they can alter your financial picture, but they don't necessarily place an undue strain on it, um, maybe with the exception of stranded capital assets. <laughs> Do you see interest in it as a, as a model for among students and recruits, I guess? Yeah, again, if, if, you, if you take kind of our theory that you've got changing workforce demands, changing types of students in school, changing uh, models of delivery, um, we see just greater and greater segmentation out there, which means what I have is I have pooled and trapped demand for different types of education that probably historically did exist or evolve, but we weren't just meeting. Um, and when you test some of these new modalities, like a competency-based learning or credit by assessment, um, what you find is there's enormous latent demand out there on behalf of students or potential students in the world.